all, all kidding aside, is that unlike mm-hmm. Bernie, who, for example, in the last debate, appeared to be deeply surprised that he was going to be asked a question about gun control and his record <laughs> um, and appeared to be kind of, you know, searching for an answer to talk about Hillary's uh, connections to uh, Goldman Sachs. I mean, I think Trump is, is you know, not that kind of opponent. He's going to be ready to uh, to respond. He's not going to be caught off guard by her rhetorical tricks. He's certainly not going to be backed into the nice guy corner um, the way she was able to do uh, with Bernie. Um, in addition, you know, Bernie, for whatever his reason, um, wrote off one of the one of the big questions, and that is about this FBI investigation. He wrote that off almost immediately in the first debate first by debate. saying how the damn emails yeah. don't matter. Um, it, it, that's just weird politics to throw something away without getting something in return like that. Um, I, Donald Trump is certainly not going to do that. See, it is the thing that where I, I want to kind of disagree a little bit with Peter on that is just that um, I don't think that Trump is going to is going to be as effective with his sort of um, you know his superpower as it is, which is to get under the skin of the person that he's running against. Um, I mean, uh, of any person in politics, the thickest skinned person could arguably be Hillary Clinton because I mean she's been under almost constant attack from you know and had scandals basically since since before she left the White House as first lady. So I, I also think that part of the reason why Bernie has had so much success, because it's certainly not his strengths as a candidate in and of itself, because, again, he's repetitive. He doesn't think on his feet well. He doesn't engage with voters in, in like an individual way. I mean, he gives this really good, uplifting message that, that you know, speaks to a thing that people are feeling, but he wasn't able to capitalize on it. We can't ignore the fact that, you know, Bernie did lose a lot of the states that, you know, he would need to win to effectively make this argument. I mean, we say that when when Kasich says he's the only candidate who can win in uh, the fall, we rights rightfully laugh because he's won only one state. So but to be even though Bernie's won. A, yes. And even though Bernie's won a few more, like one plenty more states than Kasich, of course, he still hasn't effectively made that argument by winning states. Now, I think one of the reasons that he has been able to do so well, especially as an old white guy at a time when people are very hypersensitive to things like male privilege and and sexism and things like that, is because he was such a nice guy. You know, he didn't go after the email thing. He went after her political record. He didn't he didn't he didn't uh, like you know, call her crooked Hillary or imply that she murdered Vince Foster or all the other poor shit that's out there. He just, you know, casually raised questions about her connection to the political establishment. And that kind of stuff works. If Trump is able to, you know, Trump said today that he would look at Bernie Sanders' speeches and pull some of his best stuff from there. If what he pulls from that is politely attacking Hillary's character, the Democrats just might be fucked. Luckily, I feel like there's more of a chance that, you know, Hillary give, will give birth to the love child of Elizabeth Warren and uh, Bernie Sanders and then, you know, nominated as her vice president before Trump would be polite and kind in the way that he tears down Hillary Clinton. Yeah. He's going to call her she crooked. Is, she, she He's going to say some women she, shit. And they're going to galvanize. It's. I think that's what happens. Yeah, she, she lays eggs. She doesn't give live births. I mean, I think <laughs> you know, point of, uh, that's true. Point of order there. But, you know, I, I think Justin, <laughs> the, the, differ, the difference here, though, is, is separating Bernie the nice guy um, from Bernie the guy who won't press a political point. Um, and, and I think Bernie is, is guilty of both of those, if you will. Um, you can be a nice guy, and he, as he did, for example, with the, the whole Goldman Sachs uh, issue of the speeches. You can be a nice guy, but you can still press hard on, on a political point. Um, he didn't do that earlier in the, uh, in the campaign, particularly in the early debates. He, he didn't seem to know how to do those two things at the same time. So I, I think Hillary is vulnerable, and I think Trump is, is going to be studying those speeches. I mean, I can just put, hear the words coming out of his mouth about, you know, I know Goldman Sachs. I've worked with Goldman Sachs. I know what exactly why they gave you that money, um, and I know how that works because I give people money to do these same kind of things. <laughs> um, 
she's going to have a hell of a time answering those kind of things. Wrapping herself in Obama, um, you know, Trump is just sitting there waiting for that because that's going to open the door to a, a lot of independents. Um, it may play well with Democrats. Um, it may play well with black voters who aren't going to vote for Trump anyway. Um, but it is not going to speak to uh, Trump's uh, base and, and hopefully, uh, in his mind, his expanding base.